in Kenya today, most tribes stereotype Luos as people who throw stones, people who are very rowdy, people who love conflict, people who are outspoken. Today, I want to give you a story on the Luo origin. Have you ever asked yourself why despite the Luo community being majorly made up of people with black skin complexion, there still exists a good number of those with brown skin complexion among them? So originally, the Luo were a light-skinned community with the culture of Egypt, that is Tekidi, also Kush and Meroe. Now, in Sudan, there was this place which was full of life, full of entertainment and trading activities. The Luos actually called this place Khartoum, meaning a place of disco. Today, this place is known as Hatoum. As you all know, Luos love entertainment and enjoying life. So as a matter of fact, they wanted to experience what was happening in this place. So they migrated from Egypt to Hatoum, what they called Khartoum. <laughs> With the trading activities and the live nature of Khartoum, so many people from other communities also migrated to the place and now adding to the number of those who were the original inhabitants. The Luos had to move because there was overpopulation. So the Luos moved from Khartoum to Wau. This is in, uh, in Bar el Ghazel, region in South Sudan. So it was here that they met a dark-skinned people who referred to them as Jurchol. Jurchol simply means the aliens passing through the blacks. And I'd like you to know that between the year 990 and 1125, the Luos were in Sudan. They were living among the Anu tribe. And uh, the people of this tribe were darker and preferred both livestock and crop production. So let us a series of calamities, including serious outbreak of anthrax, what Luos referred to as opere. I know Luos, when I talk of opere, for those who maybe are Catholic believers, you think of opere as Catholics call, like refer to their churches, opere, people for, like the opere guys. Eh? So that is not what we mean here. This is simply a, a term that the Luos gave uh, the, the anthrax disease. So this anthrax disease wiped all the livestock that were owned by the tribe of the Anu. And of course, the Luos who had then adopted the economic activities of the Anu also had their livestock wiped away. So following this incident, the Luo community resorted to fishing along Auranalo. You know, Auranalo is the river Nile that we know today. They were doing fishing purposely for survival. Having now resorted to fishing along the Auranalo for survival, this is how the Luo earned the name Jo or Luo Aura, simply meaning people who follow the river, which in the course of time came to be shortened to Luo or Luo. Remember, all that time they were still being referred to as Jurchol. Jurchol, I told you earlier that it means the aliens passing through the blacks. So the name has changed from Jurchol to Jo Luo Aura or Luo. South Sudan, therefore, is the first place that the Yuluo were first referred to as such. This is actually the birthplace of the Luo nation. And this explains why most tales of the origin of the Luo nation start from South Sudan's Bar el Ghazal. So in the year 1300, the Luos dispersed from Bar el Ghazal following a quarrel among the three brothers. Uh, these three brothers were namely Nyikango, Dimo, and Gilo. Just as what we witness in today's society, Differences within the homestead triggered by a power struggle led to a split, separating the three groups. So this is the period that the Luo started separating into different subgroups. 
and of course going different directions. Intermarrying with various groups they met and assimilating their culture or being assimilated into those people's culture. As a result of this, the Luo community formed several subgroups occupying different locations depending on the directions they took. Allow me mention just a number of these subgroups. We have the Shiluk, also known as Ocholo. They are found in South Sudan. The Anwang, also known as Anywa, found in Ethiopia and South Sudan. We have the Meban, found in South Sudan. The Chad Thuri, also known as Shat, they are found in South Sudan. We have the Blanda Boar, found in South Sudan. The Funj, found in South Sudan. The Pari, also found in South Sudan. The Bari, also in South Sudan. Then the Jum Jum, also found in South Sudan. We have Juluo or Jurchol, those who uh, remained with the first name before the name changed to Luo, they're also found in South Sudan. Then we have a Choli, who are found in Uganda and South Sudan. We have Kumam from Uganda, Chope, Uganda. We have Toro, also Uganda, and Langi, who are also from Uganda. Jonam are also from Uganda. We also have Jopadola, which is famous. We have the Alur, also found in Uganda. Alur are also found in DRC and Cameroon. We have the Suba Luo found in Kenya, also known as the Lua Basuba. And finally, Juluo found in Kenya and Tanzania. Now, the Luo of Kenya and Tanzania descended from intermarriage between the migrating Luos and the communities from Western Kenya's early pre-colonial period. Their language did incorporate Bantu words, making it different from the Ugandan Luo dialect. There is only one major Luo dialect in Kenya, with minor variations of the Luo language, especially from Alego, Ugenya, and Game, who incorporated some Bantu words in their language. The Luo community in Kenya has maintained its culture, language, and sustained the political unity, preventing further separation, hence becoming a political and cultural bloc in Kenya. The early intrusion of the Luo in Nyanza region was a slow and peaceful penetration and for quite some time they lived with the original inhabitants. But when the numbers increased, conflicts developed between the Luos and the original inhabitants of the area. After forcing the, uh, the then owners of the land out, the Luos settled in Namlulue area, currently Nyanza region. The Luo community can be categorized into seven major groups based on origins. These groups are Ramogi, Kawango, also known as Lua Basuba, we have Kiseru, we have Girango, we have uh, Sirati, we have Imbo. So allow me to refer to one group as others, other Luos, for lack of a better name. So let's now look at each and every group so that we get a better understanding of each of them. Let's begin with the Ramogi. The Ramogi group 
migrated from Bar el Ghazal in South Sudan and settled in Kenya and Tanzania. There existed a warrior elder named Ramogi Ajuang, who led this group into Kenya. That was actually about 500 years ago. The Luo community migrated into Nyanza in four major waves, namely Joka Jok, we have Jokowin, Jokomolo, and Jokawango, also called the Luo Abasuba. They first settled at Gotramogi, that is Ramogi Hills, in Yimbo. Yimbo is in Siaya. They later spread across the Nyanza region, North Mara, and also entered into Tanzania. So the Jokajok were the first group to arrive from their Choli land and the largest migration of the Luo recorded to Kenya. Then Jokawango were the second migration to Kenya from the Alur. Then the Jokowin, whom are actually part of the Padola, were the third to arrive in Kenya. And then we have Jokomolo, who migrated from Pawir. They were the fourth wave. The Jokawango, or Jokawanga subgroup, as others call them, came about after interaction between the Luyas and the Luo clans, who arrived from western Kenya as the fourth wave of Luo migration to Nyanza. So the Jokawango separated from the second phase of the Jokajok migration. They actually migrated from Alur in Uganda, entering Kenya through the western region, where they first established the Tiriki ethnic group. Then they went to Madungu in Wanga, before entering Siaya. The other Luos also refer to them as Jokasuba, because they migrated together with the Girango people. Sakwa is the prominent clan in the Jokawango subgroup, and generally, the Sakwa is a big clan comprising of the Kagwa, Kamgwenya, also called Waganjo. Then we have Waumi, uh, we have Kanyamwanda, Kaler, also called Kageta. I know when I talk of Kaler, <laughs> uh, we, we have people who can easily re relate because Kaler is known even to date. Then we have Kamiawa, Kamnaria, also known as Surwa. Then we have Kakmasia, also called uh, Nyasmwa. However, these people intermarry among themselves. So this is a clear indication that the broad clan of Sakwa, as I've told you, it's a big one. It's made up of descendants who cannot trace their lineage to a single ancestor. So they marry each other. Let me now talk about Kiseru Luos. Kiseru, initially actually, they were known as Bakiseruere. They were originally a Bantu ethnic group and relatives of today Abagusi community. Most of the Kiseru customs and names are very similar to those of the Gusi people. That is why many Kiseru clans have been continually referred to as Jokisi by their fellow Luos. Although Kiseru and Gusi were different ethnic groups, the Kiseru have lost most of their cultural aspects, including language. The Kiseru people today speak Doluo and have become largely part of the Luo through intermarriage and other forms of socialization. The Kiseru people have maintained intimate cultural and political relations with the Ramogi Luos. They share clan affiliations like the Karachuonyo, Karachuonyo also known as Wanjari, and the Konyango, who are also known as Rabala. The Kiseru remnants today speak Ekegusi in Nyanza or Bonchari in North Mara, and their language is in danger of disappearing. The Kiseru clans, like the Karachuonyo, Kowidi, which is also known as Kisumo, Wanjari and Wawaria are taken to be Joka Jok by historians. Those who went to Kisi Highlands call themselves Baguseru or Wanchari, and some of them can also be traced in Kericho. This actually explains to you why some, uh, some Kisi's lawyers and Luos share names. Let me now take you through the Girango group. There existed a Bantu ethnic group called Bagirango, who had their own language. They were assimilated by the Luo and adopted many aspects of the Ramogi Luo culture and language. Though, they have managed to maintain some aspects of Bantu and often use Suba as an identifier to distinguish themselves as a separate group. The Suba or Girango people are not to be confused by the Homa Bay Luo Abasuba, or simply the Abasuba community, who are Bantu of different ethnic backgrounds. So don't confuse them. These people reside within the borders of Suba sub-county. Moreover, their language, which is Ekisuba or Ekingoe, was also distinct and very different from the Olusuba, which is also known as Luganda, language spoken by the Lu Abasuba. 
particularly the Abakunta ethnic community. So the name Suba is derived from Girango's father, who was called Suba. All the Girango people owed their allegiance to Suba, from whose lineage they were founded. And the majority of the Girango clans migrated alongside the Jokawango, the fourth phase of the Lua migration into Nyanza. These people came from Uganda and settled first in western Kenya at Emanulia, where the Kawango people claim their ancestral root came from. Some of the Girango people remained behind in western. For instance, the Bamiluha and Basuba of Tiriki, as well as the Mungoe in Bunyori. Let me now talk to you about the Sirati. When I talk of Sirati, I know Luos of Kenya, they remember of a win or Messiani. Yeah. So originally, the Basirati spoke a different language and had different customs from the Luo, and are somehow related to the Banyori section of the Baluya community. They were the first to come to North Mara and Nyanza along, long before all the Luo clans. So the few Sirati remnants today speak Olumulu in Nyanza and Olusurwa in North Mara. Surwa, which is based in Nyancha locality and include the Kamsuru in Sunamigori, Kamnara among the Sakwa and Maragoli. Then we have Sanua, which was later corrupted to Sona in Sunamigori and Nyore in Yimbo. There's this group I requested you to allow me to call as other Luos. So the other Luos, also known as Nyokal, are generally a minority Luo adoptee. They were non Luo clans who were both absorbed by the Luo community. So currently, there are about 12 Luo clans found in Kenya. They consist of Joalego, Jogem, also known as Gum, Jougenya, Joseme, Jokarachuonyo, we have Jonyakach, Jokabundo, Jokisumo, Jokano, Joasembo, we have Jowyoma, Josakwa, and Jokajulu. The term Jo in Luo language refers to people of. So when I use jo, jo, you need to understand that simply means people of. Thank you so much for being part of this. I want to believe you've now understood technically the history of the Luo community, how the name Luo came, how they started fishing, why is it that in many occasions they differ in like their language, among many other things. Thank you so much. My name is Kwaji.